If you're watching this video, chances are you want to know how to replace the clock spring in your 4th gen, aka 2003-2009 to 2009 Toyota 4Runner, and Lucky Fee will be doing just that. Some reasons you may want to replace it are you pressing on the buttons on your steering wheel and nothing happens on the radio side, cruise control isn't working, pushing on the horn doesn't do anything, or you're going to get a code, I believe it's B1181. Anyways, whatever the reason is, I'm going to show you how to replace this clock spring. It's also possible that this is the same, if not extremely similar, to other fourth runner generations, let alone other Toyotas and other cars in general. The main tools you're going to need are a Phillips head screwdriver, some type of small flathead screwdriver like a prying tool, 10 millimeter socket for the battery, a T30 socket for some screws, 19 millimeter socket for the nut holding the steering wheel on wrench, torque wrench, marker to marker position, which you'll see later, and some flashlights wouldn't hurt. It's really everything you need, nothing crazy. Just gonna turn the engine on first. That way we could turn the steering wheel easily and remove these Phillips head screws, the right side and the left side. There's also one on the very bottom, right here. Now we could just turn off the engine. And so next up, we're going to be removing these covers on the steering column. Put this to the side. Do the same thing with the top cover. comes off. Putting this to the side. Now we have access to all of this. At this point, going to want to go to the battery, just disconnect one of the terminals. This is a 10 millimeter bolt. Now the battery's been disconnected, just gonna wait like five, 10 minutes before continuing. Once the car has been sitting for about five, 10 minutes with the battery disconnected, we're gonna continue. There are two covers that you wanna remove. First one is right here, it's this part. That just pops right off. I'm gonna pry this part off. Parts off too. So once the covers are off for the, or I go around the cruise control and the equivalent area on the opposite side, there are two screws that you have to loosen, not remove, but loosen. They are T30s.
Kind of loosen the same thing on the other side. You're just gonna loosen to them until they feel like they're basically out of whatever they're sitting in, but they'll stay in position. So it feels like no more threads will be engaged. And you'll know that's right by the airbag module being free to, being free to be able to take out. So to remove the module, Use my other arm to support it so it doesn't pull on the wires. You want to use some type of small flathead screwdriver to pull up on these yellow tabs. Once the tabs are off, you should just be able to pull these right out. Same thing with the ground wire. Remember, pull by the clip, not the wire. Don't want to break that. So now we could just put the module down. I'm just going to take some type of marker and just mark the position of the steering wheel relative to the bolt threads that are attached to it. Before going further, this is when you want to make sure the steering wheel is straight. Next up, you're gonna need a long or a deep 19 millimeter socket to remove this nut holding the steering wheel in place. You can make sure it's marked. That came off pretty easily. So now the steering wheel should just come off. So I'm pulling on it and it's not coming off. They make some type of steering wheel pulley or device you can use to hit it off. I'm just gonna try to give it some love taps and have to get out of place, kind of like you're taking off a rotor from a, a wheel. Just be careful you don't hit yourself in the head. There we go. Gently pull it out. Before we continue, just got to remove this electrical connector from the clock spring. And the new one that goes in right here. And I am supporting the steering wheel with my legs. Okay. Just gonna slide the wires through. For this connector, if you could have another person hold the steering wheel while you manipulate this, that's easiest. Just gonna squeeze. Just gonna squeeze this top and bottom and it slides right out. Just gonna squeeze this right here and it slides right out. And then the steering wheel can go to the side. Just note the position of the clock spring, these wires in the top, for when you put the new one on. Alright, so next up, you're going to have to come on the bottom and remove this yellow and black electrical connector from the clock spring. To do that, just get some type of small screwdriver, flathead preferably, and you're going to push up and out. That's one. This 
Same thing with that. Put those to the side and we'll move on. Now there are four screws, two on the top, two on the bottom, that hold the clock spring to this assembly. Phillips head screwdriver. Tiny ones, just be careful. Now we can just take off the clock spring. And that's how you get to the old one. Just gonna try to sprout any debris. Before you put the new one on, just compare it to the old one and make sure it is exactly the same. I'd say they're pretty, I'd say they're the same. And it says top, so don't forget that. And these tabs will line up with these holes. Now we're just gonna put the screws back in. you were wondering. At this point, everything is just the reverse. I'm gonna put the yellow connector back in. That goes on the, the one closer to the front of the vehicle. snaps in. Same thing with the black one. That snapped in, so we're good on that. Just want to prepare these by pushing this tab up. I'm going to pull this out because if you don't, well, you can't put the steering wheel back on. Just keeps it from rotating. Now we're just gonna put the steering wheel back on. Sliding these connectors through this top hole. And it will seat in place. You want to make sure that your mark on the steering wheel is lined up to the mark you made on this threaded portion it's holds on to. Just going to hand tighten the nut. <clears throat> going to reconnect the, this electrical connector. Once you know that it's a line, you can torque this down to 37 foot-pounds, the 19 millimeter socket. Just gonna torque this down again at 37 foot-pounds. Next up, gonna take the airbag module, connect the ground wire here, and the black and orange ones in their respective places.
You can close it if you need. Once they're seated in position, just gonna push down on the yellow tab. And you could just let it sit in place. If you feel resistance, just make try to move around the wires so it doesn't crunch anything. If you feel any resistance when you're trying to put it back, check the tab right there, this thing, which lines up with that screw sticking out, which is the one that you unscrewed from earlier from the sides, the T30, that may get caught. So make sure those screws are recessed. Same thing on that side, because it should slide in pretty easily. It shouldn't stick out. Like you shouldn't have to force it in, force it in so it's flush with the sides. Next up on both sides, just gonna tighten the T30 screws. Technically until 78 inch pounds, but I'm just making it till it's tight. Now is a good time to reconnect the battery before you go any further and put the covers back on. Remember it's a 10 millimeter. Slide this on. Close the, the hood. You could connect the battery later. I just did it now so it'll be easier to turn the wheel for the screws. So on the left side, just gonna replace this small cover. Same thing on the left side, on the right side. And now the top cover. Top cover, you just gotta let it sit in place. Same thing with the bottom one. Gonna put the bottom screw in first. And then the ones on the side. and the other side. Right, 
Well, that's everything there is to the video. Hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments section. Check the description for links, tools, directions, step-by-step. Until next time.